All right, Shalom, Shalom. First, I'd like to give all praises unto Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Baharaka Kadash, and double honors unto the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And honors to you, brothers out there in the highways and the byways, teaching this word in all sincerity and in truth. Uh, if I can just ask, because I'm, um, the sound is good. The sound is good. Um, <clears throat> all right, comment board is there. I'm using this Hangouts thing. I don't usually use it, so hopefully everything runs um, smooth. Uh, let me switch over to screen share. Yeah, all right, I'm screen sharing. Lovely jubbly. And as you see, the title of this um, live stream is, uh, oh, <laughs> I messed that up, didn't I? I supposed to say, Mark of the Beast in exchange for bread and safety. And the question is, is it a fair trade? <laughs> Which the answer to that question is um, no, because the Mark of the Beast is death. <clears throat> it's, a set, it's a death sentence. Straight up and down. <clears throat> Let's get uh, Matthew 16 and 25, then we get Revelations 14. Matthew uh, uh, 16 and 25 says, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. A lot of people are going to, um, in these times to come, believe it or not, they're going to look to the to the government to the state um for salvation from the perils which are gonna um you know be ubiquitous across this this earth whether you be in america britain france germany spain puerto rico it don't matter where we're talking about there's going to be great tribulation in those places um, due to what um, economic collapse, World War Three, and all the issues that that's going to cause where you live, and the, one of the main issues, the main two issues is the breakdown of law and order, so-called law and order anyway, and the the um, scarcity of resources due to the breakdown of global logistics, the movement of resources. Um, throughout the earth, it's going to cause scarcity of resources. It's going to cause disorder, lordlessness, and um, many people are going to uh, seek unto the state for relief, and the state is going to uh, offer them the mark of the beast. All right. And they're going to take the mark of the beast thinking that it's going to deliver them. It's going to save their life. When in actual fact, the mark of the beast is nothing but a death sentence. And as I've said that, let me get Revelations 14 and 9. And then I'm going to get into a clip that kind of inspired this. And I've got another article that I came across. That's how it happens sometimes, man. You get an article and you're like, yeah, I'm going to do a video on it. And you put it in the bookmarks. And then the spirit will have it where you come across some clip somewhere and it's like the, the most side jabbing you in the head like, yo, do this video, you know, slapping you around the head. Yo, don't play with it. So, you know, uh, I had to do something on it. Now, Revelations. First, let's get Revelations 13. Revelations 13 and, and 16. And it says, and he calls it all, both small and great. OK, so that's talking about small. Is talking about whether you're a little guy like me, <laughs> like the majority of you people that's probably going to be watching this this um live stream, and that's not a disrespect. It's just is what it is. We small people, we ain't of any note. Yeah, you walk outside your house, you ain't got a chauffeur. You don't you don't have paparazzi. You, you no one ain't writing no articles about you. You're nobody basically. Small. All right, that's not no disrespect. That's just the truth. Small and great. Great is your sportsman, your uh, uh, um, 
your uh, scholar of renown, your your actor, your politician, your you know just people in society who are of renown, or renown, great, small and great, rich or poor. So whether you you have um a lot of disposable income at your hand, or whether you're poor, you have a very small disposable income. Free and bond. Free is your general citizen who is at liberty under the laws of the society to walk up and down in the streets your bond represents your prisoner yeah their bond the, uh, the guys that are in belmarsh yeah people that used to be in alcatraz what it, what's that one in um america called in la man forgot what the hell it's called but any any prison anywhere those are bond those are people in bonds, right? They're in chains. They're on a lockdown. They don't have the the liberties which is generally afforded to the to 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 a citizen. Yeah, but even they are gonna be have to receive what the mark, a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And we know that that mark is the implantable RFID chip. And we've got plenty of videos going into that. All right, breaking that down refer to that revelations 13 and 17 and that no man might buy or sell now the act of buying or selling is exchange of goods and resources that's how you get food that's how you get water that's how you get your medicine even if you're getting these things for free you still have to do a transaction it's been bought for you you take an ebt card or food stamp into a, a, a place of business you are still buying you're just buying with that food stamp all right, it's buying and selling. So you ain't gonna be able to buy or sell. You're not gonna be able to to exchange in goods and services because you buy and sell services too. Save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. All right. Now let's let's jump over to Revelations 14 and 9. Now, this I'm going to pick out some key things out of this. Revelations 14 and 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast. Now, let's stop there. A lot of people will tell you that the mark of the beast is Christianity. Is a, No, the mark of the beast is the implantable microchip. The mind state is the, is the worship. The people that are going to take the mark of the beast are people who regard and worship the state over meaning what instead of seeking to the words of Yahweh and having faith in him and his deliverance they have faith in the so-called white man or the state and their deliverance whereby they worship the beast now let's look up the word worship let's look up the word worship Now the word worship is proskeneo. Let's let um the scholars speak. Play that again. Now you go down, it means to kiss the hand towards one in token of reverence. All right. So they reverence the, be the, the beast. Now, I like this. In the root etymology, it says from G4314 and a probable derivative of G2965, meaning to kiss like a dog licking his master's hand. So those who, in, in the time to come, Shalawama, seek unto um the beast or the state the power structure of the so-called white men and all the little nations that's below them that are copying that same thing they're like dogs licking their master's hand now what i want to do is i want to play a clip from this uh prepper his name is prepper Nur nurse one all right and um you know he just to build it up. He, I don't really watch this guy 
before people start saying, uh, I'm not subscribed and all that crap, I come across these things, man. All right? And it's through the spirit of power, Yabba Shem Yashai. I know you got these wackos out there that you always got to throw out some slander and, you know, hey, do what you got to do. And it's funny, this, this video is 144 long. We always see this number everywhere. But, um, and then look, the views are 666,000. You know, that's crazy. But anyway, <clears throat> I didn't even notice that. Now, this video was on February 8th. Now, he did a live stream, apparently, which I've not seen prior, where he was asking people if they would go to a FEMA camp. And of course, the majority of people were like, hell no, nah. you know? They're like, no. And then he came back and basically did a response to that response that he got from the majority of people that watch him. Because what are you going to find out? you got a lot of people that say they won't take the mark and all that. It's all good and well saying these things when you got an empty, when you got a full stomach, when you're sitting there, you just, you just ate two burgers and some fries. <laughs> you know, you just ate a whole pizza or something, man. You just, you just ate a whole grilled chicken, man, with some salad, man. And you just drank down uh, um, five beers. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just, you, you satiate it as hell. You, you hella full right now. You ain't feeding 1% of hunger. So it's easy to say, yeah, yeah, you know what? But the time's going to come where the pressure, you see, it's when you're under the pressure. That's when the real questions are asked. And that's when the real answers is going to come out. And he's basically going to go into that. So I want to play some of this clip. And um, I want to go in on it myself. Okay, so... We're going to go into this video. I wanted to talk about... Uh, yesterday, I put up a video about we'll you'll get on the, on the bus for what theme comes around for roundups. It was pretty, pretty much a resounding no. Okay? So, we're going to play a little game and I'm going to be the devil's advocate here. What if I told you that 90% of the people... They commented yesterday's on yesterday's video and said, absolutely not, I'm not going, I'll shoot them first, blah, 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 blah. What if I told you that 90% of you will willingly go to FEMA camps, if they have FEMA camps, lay your guns down and beg for help? What if I told you that? You'll say, Prepper Nurse One, you're crazy, we're not doing that. All right, we're going to play the devil's advocate here for a minute, and I'm the government. I'm not going to waste the resources of rounding up people. Not going to do it. It's a waste of time and energy. You're going to have people that are going to fight and say, no, I'm not going, whatever. Okay? So I'm not going to waste my time doing that. Now, who, who will they round up? Let's be realistic. Let's see who, who will, we're going to go a little, we're going to go around on this subject a minute. If I'm the government, people that I'm going to round up are the troublemakers. Preppers are really not troublemakers, guys. We're just people to get ready, okay? So we're not really considered troublemakers. The troublemakers are your Antifa groups, your Black Lives Matter groups, uh, the people that are, like, super, super anti-government and looking to cause trouble, okay? The ones that are trying to organize these rallies to protest the government because the government is so horrible and all this type of stuff. Those are the people they're going to go after, all right? They're not going after the average Joe citizen. All right. Now, that being said, why are you going to willingly walk in, lay your guns down, and give up? Why are you going to do that? Because if I'm the government, I'm going to control things. And the, basically, the government is going to be more concerned about controlling the big cities and, uh, you know, uh, larger towns and stuff like that. So they're not going to worry about you know everybody else okay what they're gonna do is they're gonna starve you out okay if I'm the government I stop the trucks from running I stop the food supplies I stop you know like I said fresh water that can be easily cut off as well so now how long can you hold out with no food no fresh water and stuff like that okay how long can you hold out eventually you're gonna run out of food eventually you know you're not going to be able to um do those things that you want to normally do if, if you really realize how much day to day that all of us rely on the grid rely on society if you will even if we try to be separate from it okay 
But the thing is, if it comes right down to it at the end of the day, if they cut off that food and they cut off, you know, and that realistically, that's all they got to do is cut off the food. You stop the trucks from ru ru running and eventually you're going to starve people out. And people are going to come down and they're going to willingly give up their weapons for help, for food. People are going to do it. It is a, not a matter of if they'll do it, it's a matter of when and how long it would take. So the government doesn't have to waste the resources or the manpower trying to hunt all of you down. Um, now that, that, that's being more paranoid, okay? Yeah, man, I need to, um, I might have to rethink using this laptop, man. It's a brand new laptop as well, man. It's crazy. Right. But anyway, the, the points that he were basically making was a lot of these people, like, you know, when, when you really look at it, the, the government, especially if they're in the midst of a world war, do not really have the resources to send, like, martial law troops to every house and every nook and cranny they, they they can't manage that amount of people if you look at the the the, the size of the army con, con, compared to the to the, the the major populations that they will have to be dealing with it's not possible the majority of people is the way to control them is to control the resources which is easier than than trying to directly control the people you control the resources, all right. And a lot of people, they are gonna, they are gonna submit themselves to the state for the cause of food, for the cause of of, of the pre presumed safety within certain areas and zones that the state controls, certain areas that they've cordoned for themselves. Certain places are gonna be like no man's land. They're gonna be places where anything goes out there because it's, it's crazy certain places are going to be under government control and people are going to actually want to be in these places man and to be in these places you're going to have to take that chip and it's that simple you're not going to that's how that's how they're going to get a lot of these people to get chipped now when you go into the scriptures is there a precedence for uh, uh, a people using food against their population yes there is so we, we gonna get it uh, where is it exodus no, genesis let's get a look at genesis what is it um let's find it all right we go back to the time of Egypt when we read about Joseph. Let me just get the exact account. When you read about Joseph in Egypt, the way the Pharaoh got the people to submit completely to his to his to his to his, to his um power and to his control was through food. All right. The people of Egypt were starving. And because of that, they gave themselves up completely because the Pharaoh and his men and his army, they had the control over the resources. They had the control over food. And so the people did what they would not have done on the normal circumstances. Right, so it's 41. Gen Genesis 41, and we're going to start from 48. It says, And he gathered up all the food of the seven years which were in the land of Egypt, and laid up the food in the cities. The food of the field which was round about every city laid he up in the same. So he had control of a, a vast store of food. And Joseph gathered corn as the sand of the sea, very much until he left numbering for it was without number. And unto Joseph were born two sons before the years of the famine came, which Asenath, the daughter of Pontifera, priest of Un, bare unto him. Now I'm going to jump down. Verse 53. And the seven years of plenteous that was in the land of Egypt were ended, 
and the seven years of dearth began to come according to the to as joseph had said and the dearth was in all lands but in all the land of egypt there was bread and when all the land of egypt was famished the people cried to pharaoh for bread and pharaoh said unto all the egyptians go unto joseph which what he saved to you do and the famine was over all the face of the earth and joseph opened all the storehouses and sold unto the egyptians and the famine waxed sore in in the land of egypt and all countries came into egypt to joseph for to buy corn because the famine was sore in all the lands okay Now, what ended up happening was, which I'm going to find that bit, is eventually the people of Egypt ran out of um, money. You know, they ran out of um, money to buy food. Should be around here. Right. Genesis 47. And we start from 14. Let's start from verse 13. And there was no bread in the land, for the famine was very sore, so that the land of Egypt and all the land of Canaan fainted by reason of famine. And Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan for the corn which they bought, and Joseph brought the money into Pharaoh's house. And when money failed in the land of Egypt, so basically the people of Egypt didn't have no more money to buy bread, <laughs> so they were basically, they were screwed. And in the land of Canaan, and all the Egyptians came unto Joseph and said, Give us bread, for why should we die in thy presence? For the money faileth. And Joseph said, Give your cattle, and I will give you for your cattle if money fell. And they brought their cattle unto Joseph, and Joseph gave them bread in exchange for horses, and for the flocks, and for the cattle of the herds, and for the asses. And he fed them with bread for all their cattle for that year. And when that year was ended, they came unto him the second year and said unto him, We will not hide it from my Lord how that our money is spent. My Lord also have our herds and of cattle. There is not aught left in the sight of my Lord but our bodies and our lands. Wherefore shall we die before thine eyes? Both we and our land, buy us and our land for bread. And we and our land will be servants unto Pharaoh and give us seed that we may live and not die that the land be not desolate. And Joseph bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh, for the Egyptians sold every man his field because the famine prevailed over them. So the land became uh, uh, Pharaoh's. And as for the people, he removed them to cities from one end of the borders of Egypt, even to the other thereof. Only the land of the priests bought he not, for the priests had a portion assigned them of Pharaoh, and did eat their portion which Pharaoh gave them, wherefore they sold not their lands. Then Joseph said unto the people, Behold, I have bought you this day and your land for Pharaoh. Lo, here is seed for you, and ye shall sow the land. So the, 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 the point of the matter is, is that the Egyptians, because of um, the great famine, and of necessity ended up selling their all their lands and um and even themselves to Pharaoh. Now that wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for that famine. And that brings me back to this video and and the statement this this guy said. He said a lot of these people that are saying they ain't gonna go to FEMA camps and all this garbage, their tune is gonna change when they get hungry. They're going to change their tune when they get hungry for the for lack of bread. Yeah, and they're going to be running, they're going to be running and begging the so-called white men, the power structure, the elites, the state for that food. And guess what? They're going to have to take that chip. All right. And it's a situation that's not only going to be in, in, in um America, it's going to be it's going to be in Britain, it's going to be France, and it's all the same. All right? I want to get a scripture. 
And that's all part of Jake, the time of Jake of Trouble. And a lot of Jake are going to starve to death any damn way. A lot of Jake are going to be getting put to death by other, you know, other people who are looking for food. It's going to be crazy times, man. Jeremiah 30 and 7, alas, for the day is great. In fact, let me read up a bit. I want to jump straight to the point on this one. Jeremiah 30 and 5, for thus saith the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask ye now and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness? Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. And the ones that are going to be saved out of this time of great tribulation that's coming isn't the ones that are going to be looking to the state and looking to the so-called white man and looking to the arm of flesh. For salvation it's going to be the elect who are going to look to salvation from the heavens look to salvation from from the, the heavenly father through his blessed son yahweh shai that's the ones that are going to be saved the rest of the people they're going to die by famine they're going to die by the sword all right they're going to die by the missiles they're going to die mm -hmm. by the pestilence and that's just how how it's going to be yeah and a lot of them are going to take are going to are going to uh, are be jumping over each other to take that chip so they could get some rations, so they can get some food. Carnal. But that's how it is. All right. Now I want to get this. Um, and that's why when you look at all these different countries, man, America, whether it be America or Britain, we've, we've each gone into it before. Under the Emergency Powers Act, they all have the power to confiscate all the resources in the land. The fuel, the energy, the water, the food everything so if they if they go and gather up all these things together like what pharaoh did then the people are gonna have to go to them it's it's it's, it's that simple and this and this is isn't nothing new this is something which has happened many times throughout history and it's going to happen again because people don't change yeah when it comes to the, the core motivations of people it's never changed yeah the basic necessities of life is the number one motivator man Food and safety. You can easily control people with food and safety because those are the two things, the two base things that all people desire and need. Food and safety. Yeah? The Mas what's it called? The Maslow hierarchy of needs. Before everything else, people desire food and safety, food and shelter. These are facts, all right? That's the nature of the flesh, all right? Now, I've got this article here. Now it says this, it says Britain, four meals away from anarchy if cyber attack takes out power grid. Now this is, this is them talking about the power grid. The whole concept is based around the fact that this, the way the society is built, you need certain things to be in place for the free flow of resources. So they're talking about the power grid, but it really goes much deeper than the power grid. But in this particular instance, that's the situation they're discussing. But just concentrate on the fact four meals away from anarchy. If there is a breakdown in the movement of food in and out of Britain or across country, cities like uh, Birmingham, London, the major cities are going to be in some serious problems because they're four meals away from anarchy, from, from panic from scarcity, all right? As British cities would be in uninhabitable within days, and the country is only a few meals from anarchy if the national grid was taken down in a cyber attack or solar storm disaster, security experts warn. 
modern life is so reliant on electricity and it's not just electricity electricity just powers the logistical situation modern life is so reliant on electricity that a prolonged blackout would quickly lead to a loss of water fuel banking transport and communications that would leave the country in the stone age according to them which were really there was no such thing the warning comes weeks after the defense secretary gavin williamson said russia had been spying on the uk's energy infrastructure and would cause thousands of thousands of deaths if it crippled the power supply which all that is part of war part of war is you want to cripple the other nation's uh, infrastructure so these things are, are all going to be in the mix as well but the point of the matter is is that they're pointing on that people don't realize man how real fast real quick food can become a major issue and with that comes anarchy now is that in the scriptures yes that's in the scriptures so we know that's actually going to happen Right, second is just 15. And we're going to start from, from verse 14. It says, Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. For the sword and their destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another with and swords in their hands. For there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. You're always going to get a, 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 a part of the society which are going to go road warrior. That people that are going to go road warrior, they're going to go out on their own with their guns and their knives and their bats, and they're going to go get it. You're always going to have that element, and they're going to fight against the government. They're going to fight against the state. That element, but that's not going to be everyone. You're going to get a lot of people that's going to be caught in the middle of that. <laughs> they're not got that spirit on them they're going to be looking they're going to be running and searching and looking for safety where they know where they've been programmed to find it and where fema at mainly a lot of these women all right but a lot of men too ain't they ain't down for that road warrior life hell no they want they want to chill man they want life to go back to the way it was, where they could just go down to Starbucks and chill in safety without worrying about a maniac jumping through the window and smashing their head open with a baseball bat, man. For their Snickers bar. <laughs> a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able because when all hell breaks loose, you got economic collapse and anarchy. What the government does is they go into a situation, emergency powers, they 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 do a cordon. So they 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 cordon off certain areas of the city and these are safe zones and everything outside of that is no man's land and then what they do is they'll they'll go block by block they call it um, a military cordon cordon and control so they'll control certain key points and block off the rest and then try and assimilate it bit by bit i believe there was a game they had like that um there was an actual game they came out on, on PlayStation like that, pretty much where one of these American cities had fallen into anarchy and the new government were trying to take back the city piece by piece. And everything that was outside of the area of control was just a straight up no man's land with, with people. I'm sure one of the brothers probably knows what game it is on the comment board. But we'll see. But it was one of them. It was a big game. He basically, you know, you were one of them agents of the government. You'd run up into the no man's land and to get to get resources and things that might be in that region. And, and it was some crazy stuff. But that's pretty much how it will play out. Because a city like London is a, it's a massive place. It's difficult to, for, for the authorities to control every part. So they'll control certain parts and build on that and leave most people to die or fend for themselves. It's just, it's just how it works. So it's, it's, it's gonna be crazy, man. And you're gonna have people trying to get from one area to another area, and it's gonna be all kind of crazy stuff like they showed you in um, Children of Men. 
madness going on. It's going to be mad. It's going to be crazy. And in that time, you're going to want the Lord to be with you, man, because <laughs> it ain't going to be no, 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 um, no cakewalk. That's for sure. It says, a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. So they're going to be controlling bridges. They're going to be controlling um, key points of infrastructure and logistics. That's where they'll, they'll concentrate their military force or that martial law. So you, you might want to leave the city, but the, the, the points to get out of the city are being blocked off by heavy armaments. All that crazy stuff, man. It says, for, because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, man. These cities that these people are so proud of are going to be turned into nothing but shit-filled, uh, decomposing, uh, 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 body-filled, stinking, rotten, burning heaps, man. With nothing but screams of terrors and gunshots and blood in the streets, man. That's what's going to be happening. You see, he's going to be brought low. And you know, people go to New York, they go to London on a nice summer's day, and they sit there in the cafe drinking Prosecco, Prosecco with, 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 with cupcakes. And that's, that, that's going to be done away. Ain't going to be no cupcakes, man. All right. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. A lot of these guys that think they're so hard and they're so tough, they're going to they're gonna get their egos checked, man, because this is going to be real. Yeah, this ain't going to be no, no, um, none of that fake gangster shit, or it's going to be way above all that. Because these, even these niggas out here thinking they're gangster and all that, they have a, they have a comfort zone that they live in. This situation right here is going to take everybody out of their comfort zone, man. Ain't nobody prepared for this. This is, this is madness. This is craziness. This is your, this is most of your family are dead or dying. This is crazy. This is madness right here. This is you not knowing where your next meal is going to come from, which most people, especially in the West, have never experienced that, period. I've, I know I've never experienced that. I've experienced being at work and can't wait to leave work to go buy something to eat. Because I might be a bit hungry, maybe I skipped a meal. I've experienced you you might be at work and you thinking about that meal that you go, oh, you were at school and you just know your mom was cooking up, cooking up your favorite meal. You know what I'm saying? You knew exactly what were you knew what the deal was. Or you might be in a situation where you got food in your fridge, but your issue is what you want to eat isn't in your fridge. But if you really had to eat, you got food there. You got rice, but I don't feel like eating rice today. Uh, you know, you might have some bread. I don't feel like eating. I don't feel like eating this. Well, guess what? The time that's gonna come, you just gonna feel like eating anything. <laughs> and a lot of people are gonna gonna be eating people, man. I'm telling you, man, it's it's a whole different ball game what the Lord is about to bring down on this place. All right, on all you ego trippers out there. Now you got this new thing going on. You niggas from Tottenham. You got a beef with niggas from Wood Green, and you you shooting at each other. You guys are going to get the perfect opportunity to prove how hard you really are. And a lot of you guys are going to break down, man, when you find your mom in the house half eaten with a shotgun blast through a damn fucking, through a face, man. A lot of you guys are going to bug out because it's way above all that gangster rap shit that you, you, you've been, you been um, living on. Way above that. This, this is hell on earth. All right? A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor but shall destroy their horse houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and great tribulation. What is that? The lack of bread, the famine, and great tribulation is the anarchy the, that is going to cause the killing, the killings, the violence, because you're going to have a lot of desperate people. And a lot of people, because of that lack of bread and that great tribulation, going back to, to what this guy said, they gonna run to them government camps, and when they go, when they run to the government, they gonna have to take that chip. So a lot of people are gonna take take that chip, man. A lot of people are gonna try and get away from this, from from the the uh, the blood, the lack of bread, and the great tribulation, and they are gonna run to get that chip, man. And they are gonna think it's a fair deal, okay? And you know we could go into a whole bunch of stuff, man. 
I could sit here and go through a whole bunch of legislations. We could talk about here in the UK, the Cobra team can invert emergency powers. We can go into all that. We could go into the flashbacks to World War One, World War Two, when the government were in control of the food supply and the rationings and all these different things and how that's going to happen again. You know, we can go into all the executive orders. We can go into the, the, the National Defense Resource Preparedness, how that's all about the preparation for the control of resources. We could go into all that. But the bottom line is this, that the main, the main thing that we teach here at Great Millstone and in the ministry is to believe in Yahweh Shai, to believe in him, to believe in his salvation and his plan. And the ones of you who don't, you're going to be destroyed, man. You're going to try and find another path, another avenue, which, which you deem is going to lead on to your salvation. But the, all paths, all roads, there used to be a saying, all roads lead to, to Rome, right? Well, all roads other than Yahweh Shai lead to death. And it's that simple. So for all of you that's going to run to the government to get that chip for whatever reason, for you, your family, and your children, just know that according to Revelation, the 14 chapter, the 9 verse down to 10, okay, you are going to be destroyed. In fact, let's get that. That might be a good scripture to finish on. Okay, that's why it's the Lord. The times that are going to come, it's the Lord that's going to have to put the spirit on you to resist temptation, man. Because this thing, ain't, it's, you're going to be under some serious pressure, man. And there's going to be times when it's going to look like, fuck. You know what I'm saying? There's going to be times when it's going to look like, fuck. Like, how the hell am I going to get? You, there are going to be times when you're going to have your back against that water and you got the Egyptian army rolling on your ass, man. And it don't look like that water going to open up behind you. That's when you got to have faith. That's when your faith is, but the faith is a gift. And, 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 and all you people out there that's, that's not um, preparing yourself in, in the right spirit, and and you're you're not uh, you're not uh, um, setting your foundation on Yahweh Shai. You got evil heart. You got hatred for your brother. All right. You ain't you ain't coming to the Lord in meekness. You're not really concerned about the truth. You're playing games. All you guys, man, are gonna be caught out there, man. Because the Lord ain't gonna the Lord ain't gonna put the spirit of of, of firmness on you, man. The spirit of faith on you, man. You are gonna have the spirit of fear, man. And your own fears are going to lead to your destruction, man. Your own carnal mind, man. Revelations 14 and 9, and the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. So anyone that take that chip thinking you're going to deliver yourself, man, hey, you're going to be destroyed, man. You've received damnation unto yourself, man. Because you, you, um, you didn't believe in the son of Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh Shai. And it's condemnation unto you. You're going to be destroyed. All right? See, bro, I was bringing out all kinds of precepts on there. All right, so, you know, with that, you know, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a leave it there. I just thought that this guy here, he made some good points and we could bring out some edification, man. And like he said, even now, 90% of these people that, that know about the FEMA camps and say, oh, I'll never do that. 90% of them, they're going to be up in that FEMA camp doing backflips, okay? <laughs> hey, because the Lord ain't with them any damn way. Lord ain't with you, man. In fact, let me get that scripture. I think I need to bring that out. The hour of temptation, man. See, Satan going Satan to show you what, what you would perceive would be a way out, man. Okay. 
But you already know what the way out is. The way out is your house shy. But Satan, in the carnal sense, he's going to show you what you believe to be a way out, man. And it's, it's going to be tempting. It's not called the hour of temptation for no reason. The temptation is to be is to turn your back on what you know, turn your back on what you believed or claim you believed. All right. Revelations 3 and 10, because thou hast kept the word of my patience. Yeah, the word of the Lord's suffering, because to 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 um you gotta suffer in this gospel, you gotta suffer in this faith, you gotta suffer this world. But those that keep that word of patience the lord said i also will keep thee from the hour of temptation meaning in that day the lord is gonna the lord is gonna defend us man the lord is gonna put the spirit on us to resist the devil to resist temptation to stand firm and to continue unto his coming which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth because everyone is going to be tested man a lot of people that claim right now that they're good people and they wouldn't do this and they wouldn't do that. When that time comes, the true intents of their heart is going to come out, man. A lot of guys are going to be selling out. They're going to sell out their brother. All kind of crazy shit. They're going to eat their children. All kind of shit that they will swear to all high heaven right now that they wouldn't do. They're going to do. Hey, because the Lord ain't going to keep them from that hour of temptation, man. And they're going to be doing all kinds of evil. A lot of you guys out there saying oh great millstone where this where that hey man shudder to think the kind of evil shit that you'll be doing you sick bastards okay but the the, the men of the lord are going to be remain blameless man and and hold on to our integrity integrity in all things man hey so with that you know i'm gonna say shalom and um it's luckier for the the, the issues that i had Maybe I should have been a little bit more prepared, but I just did it, you know, off the cuff. Hopefully, brothers were edified, man. So with that, I'm going to say Shalawam.